whatever feels nice. Okay, and then from here, we're gonna take our arms into a cactus shape. So elbows are nice and wide, palms face the ceiling. If you have space and you're not gonna knock into your neighbor, you can put your arms out into a T. And then bend your knees, so the knees are right over top of your hips and the shin bones are parallel with the earth. Good, as you exhale, you're just gonna drop both knees over to the left, trying to keep the knees stacked right on top of each other, letting that right shoulder head drop down. And inhale, coming back to center. And exhale, switching sides, dropping the knees over to the right, twisting to the left. Inhale, come to center. Exhale, drop the knees over to the left. Inhale, center. Exhale, drop right. Inhale, center. Exhale, drop left. Inhale, center. Exhale, drop right. Good, then inhale, take it back to the middle. Hug the legs into your chest, giving them a super tight squeeze. And start to rock and roll front to back, front to back. So inhale, rocking forward. Exhale, dropping your weight back. Inhale, forward. Exhale, back. Inhale, coming all the way up. Planting your palms, step back, downward facing dog. And then once you find a down dog, just making any movements that intuitively feel nice. Whether that's pedaling through the feet, swinging your knees side to side. Keeping the gaze still at your navel. Trying to keep the breath steady. So inhales and exhales are of the same duration. Good. And then from here, you're going to walk the hands back towards your feet just like a foot. So just a little bit, like one little foot. Good. Then take your left hand, grab a hold of the outside of your right shin bone. Maybe you just hold on to the shin. Maybe you start to snuggle your hand down towards the left ankle, or maybe even hook your fingers underneath your left heel. And on the exhale, maybe adding a little bit of a deeper bend into that elbow, revolving through the chest, letting the head be heavy. Inhale, take that right hand back to center, and exhale, switch sides. Left hand to the outside of your right shin bone. Maybe the ankle, maybe hooking the fingers underneath the heel. And then exhale, very gentle tug on that leg to revolve the chest a little bit deeper. And then no effort in the head, just let everything dangle. So I then take both hands back to center. Walk them forward to your, your traditional down dog stance. Taking one more deep inhale here. And exhale, bend your knees, look forward, step or jump the feet between your hands. Inhale, look up and lengthen your spine, and exhale, fold. Heel toe your feet apart, hip with distance. Take a hold of opposite elbows, just angle. And you can sway side to side, or you can bob the head up and down, just creating space through the vertebrae. And from here, you're going to roll the inner thighs back, squeeze the sit bones together, wrap them down so the belly engages, and take your fingertips down to the earth under your shoulders. You're going to try to keep the pelvis squared off to the front of the mat. Just walk your hands over to the left. So you're adding a gentle twist. Just feel that whole right side body stretch. Pull that right hip back. And then inhale, coming back to center. And exhale, walking the hands over to the right. Doing your best to keep the hips squared off, maybe pulling that left hip back a little bit more. It's feeling like a gentle stretch to the left side of your body. Your inhale, walk the hands back to center. Heel for the feet to touch. And a few breaths working here. Inhale, look up and lengthen. And exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Good. This time, inhale, reach the arms overhead. Gaze past your thumbs, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, pull the hands right in front of your heart center, Samastriti. And then setting our intention for today's class. And today our intention is realizing that emotions such as fear, uncertainty, um, doubt, are very normal things. And they're all essential parts of the human experience. And even the people and the figures in our life that seem like they have everything together and are totally on top of things still experience these emotions. 
So making friends with them, incorporating them into who you are, and trusting that they're kind of valuable, they're not something to be resisted. So taking a deep inhale right into the heart. Exhale, open the mouth, offer that out. Inhale very slowly. Releasing your arms, open the eyes, Surya Namaskar A. Inhale, stretch the arms all overhead, gaze past your thumbs. Exhale, bow forward, take the hands down to the earth as you fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, look up and lengthen through your spine. First one, we'll step back. So pinch your palms down, come to the top of your push-ups, and then hug the elbows in as you exhale, lower down, shudder, and Uttanasana. And then inhale, upward facing dog or cobra, spreading the toes wide. Exhale, pull your hips up and back, Adhimu Pushmanasana, down, facing dog, inhale. Exhale, one. Inhale, exhale two. Every inhale, sending the breath to the space between the shoulder blades. Every exhale, corseting the ribs together, cinching at the waist. So you're making the belly center smaller and feeding the heart center with breath. And take one more deep inhale to stretch your heels back. Exhale, bend the knees, look forward, step or jump your feet between the hands. Inhale, look up and lengthen. Exhale, fold over the legs, Uttanasana. Inhale, stretch the arms all overhead, gazing past your thumbs, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, bow forward, take the hands down to the earth and fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, look up and lengthen through the spine. Exhale, step or jump back, Chaturanga Dhanasana. Inhale, Urdhva Pushmanasana, gazing at the nose. Exhale, Adhanga Pushmanasana, gazing at your belly. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, deep inhale, exhale. Then look way past your fingers, squeeze the upper arms together, and then put weight into the palms, because you're gonna have to use them to support your whole body. Bend your knees deeply, separate up the feet between your hands, and he'll look up and lengthen your spine. Exhale, fold over the legs, Uttanasana. Inhale, reach the arms all overhead, gazing past your thumbs, and we'll do one more like that. Exhale, bow forward, take the hands down to the earth and folds. Inhale, look up and lengthen through the spine. Exhale, Chaturanga Dasana, step or jump back. Inhale, Urdhva Mukhashvanasana. Exhale, Adhva Mukhashvanasana. Just three breaths this time. Inhale. Exhale, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale, stretch the heels back. Exhale, bend your knees, look forward. Step or jump the feet between your hands. Inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach the arms all overhead, gaze and past your thumbs, keep the heels rooting to the earth, stay standing, just release your arms, Samasitihi. Good, as you inhale, bend your knees deeply, arms reach up, Utkatasana, chair pose. Exhale, hands to the earth and fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, look up and lengthen through your spine. Exhale, plant the palms, step or jump, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, Urdhva Mukhashvanasana. Exhale, push the hips up and back, Adho Mukhashvanasana. Step your right foot between your hands, drop the left heel down to the earth. Inhale, arms reach up, Veer Badasana 1. Exhale, hands come down, step back and lower, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, Urdho Mukhashvanasana. Exhale, Adho Mukhashvanasana. Step your left foot between your hands, right heel cruise. Inhale, ride the breath to stand, Veer Badasana 1. Exhale, hands to the earth, step back and lower, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, Urdhva Mukhashvanasana. Exhale, Adho Mukhashvanasana. Hold and breathe. Inhale. Exhale. Deep inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Last inhale here. Exhale, bend your knees, look forward. Step or jump the feet between your hands. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, bend your knees deeply, arms reach up, Utkatasana, chair pose. And we're going to add a twist from here. So take the left elbow to the outside of the right thigh, Pardita Utkatasana. And drop your buns nice and low. Think up dog in the chest, so pull the heart towards your thumbs. And then today, see if we can maybe get a little bit of a deeper snuggle, taking that left shoulder a little closer towards that right knee. 
Squeeze the knees together. Inhale, arms reach overhead, Utkatasana. And exhale, right to the other side. Take the right elbow to the outside of your left leg. And then drop the hips low, lift up through the heart. And from here, see if we can snuggle a little bit deeper. So maybe taking the right arm closer to the left knee. Just letting the thighs burn and be like, okay, they're supposed to do that. Inhale, reach the arms overhead, Utkatasana, listen closely. Exhale, put your buns on the floor. Lift up, Navasana boat pose. So from here, twisting to the right, interlacing your hands into a fist, you can extend the index finger if you'd like. We're gonna keep our right leg nice and high, or sorry, we're gonna keep our left leg nice and high. Exhale, lower the right leg, and the chest just a little. And inhale, lift up. Exhale, lower, reaching through the feet. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift, try to drop the shoulder blades down. Exhale, lower, good. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, come to center. Exhale, twist to the left. Same thing, other side. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, pick it up. Keep reaching through that right leg so you have it like pinned in the air and that supports the rest of the movement. Exhale, up. Inhale, down. Exhale, up. Inhale, down. Exhale, up. Inhale down, exhale up, inhale down, exhale up, come back to center, palms to shin bones, plant your palms, pick it up, shoot it back. Chaturanga Nadasana. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Exhale, pressing the hips up and back, Adhva Mukha Svanasana. Just hang out here, deep inhale, exhale. So just in case you're wondering, that's hard for everybody. And sometimes you feel like so special, we're like, it's so hard for me but we're all going through it. So just trust it's a shared experience and that kind of makes it fun. Like in my own practice, sometimes I'll look around the room, don't tell my teacher that, but sometimes I do. And it's so beautiful to kind of see everyone struggling and you're like, wow, I'm not the only one that's having a hard time. And then we can kind of joke about it later and it's like something we all share, is that we share that moment of hardship that we start every single day with. Taking one more deep inhale here. Exhale, bend your knees, look forward, step or jump the feet between your hands. Inhale, look up and lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, bend your knees, arms reach up, Utkatasana. Exhale, twist to the right. Good, inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, twist left. Keep moving, inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, twist right. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, twist left. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, twist to the right. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, twist left. Inhale, Utkatasana. Surprise, put your buns on the floor and lie down. But this isn't like yay lie down, it's like you're about to do something. <laughs> so bend your knees, plant the knees over the hips, and you're gonna take the hands behind your head, interlacing the fingers, spreading the elbows nice and wide. And pull the front ribs to the back plane of the body so you feel the rib cage become flush with your mat. And take a deep inhale. On the exhale, extend your left leg to hover, lift the shoulder blades up, and take your left elbow to the right knee. Good, and then switch sides. Right leg hovers, take the elbow to the left knee, and switch, and switch, and switch, and then switch, and keep going using your breath. And just imagine you're doing like bicycles, but it's like a really cute like beach cruiser bicycle with a basket, and the basket has like flowers on it. It's not like a scary spin, like in a dark, cold gym. Good, and we're gonna go for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hug it in. Hope your belly if you need to, just kind of tell yourself whatever you need to be able to move on. Then cross the shin, bar, shin bones, start to rock and roll front to back, front to back. Building up momentum. Whenever you're ready, come on forward, plant the palms, step or jump back to the right hand in Inhale, Urva Mukhashvanasana. Exhale, Hutsu Bhakti back, Adha Mukhashvanasana. Deep inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. This time we're going to step our right foot between our hands, drop the left heel down to the earth. Inhale, arms reach overhead, Virabhadrasana 1. Exhale, open arms, hips, and shoulders, rear adjustment in two. So feel that thing in your belly that you just woke up, 
and use that to lift everything. So sit bones wrap right under the thighs, just encouraging the legs to connect to this place, and then pull the ribs down towards the hip points. Spread the arms nice and wide, keep the gaze fixed over the right middle finger, and this just makes sure that even though things are hard, you stay focused. Good, then flip your right palm to the ceiling, take your left arm down the left leg, deep exhale here. Stay reversed as you inhale, extend through the right leg. On the exhale, hinge way forward, planting your palm down onto the floor, a block for your shin bone. If you know how to grab the big toe with the peace fingers, you can take that variation. And inhale, left arm reaches straight up, Utita Tripanasana Triangle Pose. Inhale, exhale, ribs push back, pelvis presses forward. Inhale, exhale, two. Inhale, exhale, three. Inhale, Exhale, four. Inhale. Exhale, five. Inhale, come all the way up to stance. Exhale, bend your right knee. Place the right hand to the outside of your right foot. Stretch that left arm up and over the left ear. Utita Parjvokanasana A. And notice if your forehead is lower than your chin and you're kind of letting your head sag down, look more towards the front of the mat and lift the forehead higher than your chin. And feel that create a little bit more space through the neck. Shoulders move away from the ears. Again, just creating more space for the neck to feel free. Continue squeezing that right knee open. Inhale, come all the way up to stand. Inhale, 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 inhale. Exhale, hands come to the hips. Turn your toes and the heels out. Inhale, lengthen through your spine. Exhale, bow forward. Take the hands to the earth underneath your shoulders. Inhale, lengthen through the heart. Exhale, walk the hands back. Reach the crown of the head to the earth. Crowds you to Pradhutanasana A. So as always, you want to squeeze the elbows here and just play that little weight distribution game. Can you roll the weight towards your toes, making the hips lighter, and then putting the heels down. Toes roll forward, and then put the heels down. Some of us, some of us, if our head is comfortably on the floor, we're going to squeeze the elbows, reach through the feet, and then straddle up into Shear Shasana V. And then today in Shear Shasana V, Maybe if you find your headstand, can you squeeze your legs together and just pivot the pelvis over to the right. And then maybe you come back to center, pivot the pelvis over to the left. And then come back to center with control, exhale, straddle the legs back. Everybody inhale, lift up just halfway. Exhale, take the hands to the hips and squeeze. Press through the feet, inhale, come all the way up to stand. Exhale here. On the inhale, reach the arms to shoulder height just to recalibrate your shoulders. Exhale, interlace the hands behind your spine into a fist. Press through the feet, inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, bow forward, reach the arms up and overhead. Proud you to put it in seat. Inhale. Exhale, one, lift up through the quads. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale, exhale three. Inhale, exhale four. Inhale, exhale five. Inhale, come all the way up to stand. Exhale, release the arms, set your feet up for warrior two. So right toes forward, left toes in. Bend that right knee. Inhale, reach the arms to the shoulder height, just one breath. Exhale, wimble your hands down to frame the right foot, spin onto the ball of your left foot. You're going to extend the right leg and hop the left foot in so the hips are square off to the front of the mat. Pars Rotanasana. Inhale, lengthen through the spine. And exhale, fold forward, chin towards your right chin bone. And notice the tendency if you want to look back at the belly and be like comforted and assume fetal position. Don't do that. Grow. Send your heart to the front of the mat. Gaze way past your toes. Keep reaching that right hip back so you get length through both side bodies. As you inhale, look up and lengthen. Exhale, you're going to take your left hand, place it either onto the floor or onto a block on the pinky edge side of that right foot. Let's take our left hand, or sorry, our right hand into the right hip and just pull that hip back as we lengthen the heart forward. Let's squeeze the outer hips together so that stays in place. Next step is to maybe inhale, extend that right arm up, Uttita Triponasana, tri your ball of triangle. Inhale. Exhale. Use that hand on the floor, push it down, 
and then scrub the palm towards the back of the mat to get a little more length through the spine. One more deep inhale. Exhale, release both hands down to the earth. Look up and lengthen, bend the right knee, and exhale, step it back down. We're facing down. Deep inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, just resetting. Deep inhale. Exhale, take your left foot between your hands, right heel roots down. Inhale, arms reach up, Virabhadrasana one. Exhale, open arms, hips and shoulders, Virabhadrasana two. And fixing the gaze over the left middle finger. We might not have that core work fresh in our bodies anymore, but can you still find that place in the belly and just pull everything to that spot? Sit bones under the thighs, pull the ribs back. When the ribs pull back, notice if the shoulders start to hike up towards the ears, keep them soft. And see if squeezing the upper thighs allows you just to get a little bit more space through your chest. And on the inhale, flip your left palm to the ceiling, right arm down the right leg, deep exhale there. Stay reversed, inhale, just extend your left leg. As you exhale, hinge way forward, placing the left palm down onto the floor, a block of your shin bone. Right arm reaches up, Uttita Trikonasana, Triangle Pose. And then just like Warrior Two, you do the same work in the pelvis and in the ribs. The only difference is your knee isn't bent and you have a hand on the floor. So sit bones towards the backs of the knees, pull the ribs back. And I read an article saying so yoga teacher shouldn't say this, but make yourself between two panes of glass. And squeeze the upper thighs, inhale, come all the way to stance. Exhale, bend your right knee, place the right hand to the outside of the right foot, left arm reaches up, or sorry, left hand to the outside of the left foot, reach the right arm up and over the right ear, with the Parjwal Kanasana A. And notice the tendency for the head to sag, because it's like there's so much to think about, we're like, I can't focus on what my head is doing either. But see if you can look forward, tilt the chin down, the forehead up, and create a little bit more space through the neck. And the gaze should be at the left the right fingertips and that kind of movement in the head facilitates that good gaze. And squeeze the left knee into the arm. Inhale, come all the way to stand. Inhale, 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 inhale. Exhale, take the hands to the hips. Turn your toes and your heels out. Good. And wiggle the feet a little closer than you normally do. Inhale, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, bow forward. Take the hands to the earth underneath your shoulders. Take your right hand at the outside of your left shin bone. Take your left arm, cross it in front of the right, take a hold of the outside of the right shin bone. Some of us are just gonna hold here, pulling the elbows together. Some of us are gonna try to pull the elbows together, then reach the left elbow forward, right elbow back, and start to snuggle our head underneath or in between the arms. Notice how that left hip might wanna pop up. Can you see if you could drop down? Lovely, the sacrum out with the ceiling. Unwind your head, we're gonna switch sides, take the right arm, cross in front of the left. Pull the elbows together. Some of us maybe take that right elbow forward, left elbow back, and snuggle the head between your arms. This time, right hip pulls down, left hip pulls up. And this is the check to see if you wore deodorant pose. Give yourself a sniff. And if you have your head between the arms, unwind. Take both hands down to the earth. Inhale, lift up just halfway. Exhale, take the hands to the hips and squeeze. Press through the feet. Inhale, rise to stand. Exhale here. Inhale, arms reach to shoulder height. Recalibrate the shoulders. Exhale, hands to the hips. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, bow forward. Take your peace fingers, catch onto the big toes of each foot. Inhale, lengthen through the heart. Exhale, bend the elbows, crown of the head goes down, press your product to in a deep position. And here too, rolling the weight towards your toes, stacking the pelvis over the ankles, so there's no fear. Just roll the weight forward, lift up through the quads, and even though we get lighter and feel like we're about to lose control, we kind of enjoy that. We're like, oh, I'm getting light, how exciting. Inhale, lift up just halfway. Exhale, take the hands to the hips and squeeze. 
Press through the feet, inhale, come all the way to stand. Inhale, 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 inhale. Exhale, left toes forward, right toes in. Bend your left knee. Inhale, reach the arms to shoulder height. We are to the two. Exhale, bring the hands down between your left foot. Spin onto the ball of your right foot. Inhale, extend your left leg. Exhale, hop the right foot into the hips. Square off to the front of the mat. Then inhale, look up and lengthen. Heart reaches the knees way, way, way out in front of you. You keep that length. Exhale, you just take the torso closer toward your left side. Pressing forward into that, the left toes, pulling that left hip back. And anytime you're tempted to curl in and look at your belly, you say, nope, I'm growing. This is awkward, but I'm growing. As you inhale, lift up just halfway. Exhale, you're going to take your right hand to the pinky inch side of your left foot. Take your left hand to the hip and pull the left hip back as the heart reaches forward. Maybe you hang up here. Maybe inhale, you start to peel that left arm up. Parvita Trikonasana, Revolve Triangle. See if you can look up with that right eye. Noticing how if you gaze up, the twist will follow. Where our gaze goes, the energy flows. So you exhale, put both hands down. Inhale, look up and lengthen. Exhale, bend your left knee. Step back down, facing up. Deep inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, bend your knees deeply. Look forward. Step or jump the feet between your hands. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, sweep the arms overhead, coming to stand. Exhale, release the arms alongside your body. Samastitihi. Good. On your inhale, you're going to hug your left knee into the chest. Give it a tight squeeze. Take your right hand, grab the pinky edge side of your left foot. Inhale, sweep that left arm alongside the left ear. Some of us are going to hold like this. If you'd like to move on, extend your left leg. Reach the left arm behind you, coming into moonrise. Wrapping that left hip down, keeping the heart nice and tall, think up dog. The ribs pull in so the belly can support you. Then keep the shape you've made. You're just going to slowly let go of that left foot so it looks like you're mid-slipping on a banana. And now we take this for a swing. Swing that left leg back. Take the left fingertips to the earth underneath your left shoulder. And then just like in revolve triangle, take that right hand to the hip. Pull the hip back as you lengthen the heart forward. Holding here, our next step, reach that right arm up, or sorry, that left arm, right arm up. Parvita, Arch and Vasana, rotated half moon. Spreading through the backs of the knees, squeezing the hips, lengthening your heart. Then look at the floor, put both hands to the floor, step the left foot to meet the right. We're going to drop your hips nice and low, and we're going to twist to the left. So spin your knees to the right. Start to snuggle that right arm to the top of your left leg. I know it's weird, we usually twist to the right. We're going to do left today. We're going to take part of the left pass in a side crow. So first step, get as deep a twist as you can. Snuggle, snuggle, snuggle. And plant the palms underneath your shoulders. Look way out in front of you. Pick your hips up. And the chest has to go way past the fingertips to get the feet light enough where you can snuggle them up towards your hips. Squeeze the upper arms. Big, even, deep breath into the back ribs. Okay, then put your feet down, spin the knees back to center, exhale, fold. Heel toe the feet apart, Padangustasana, take the peace fingers, catch onto the big toes. Inhale, look up and lengthen, sit bones squeeze together, feel that help you find the belly. Exhale, bend the elbows, crown of the head goes down. Every inhale, lengthening the side bodies by stretching the belly over the thighs. Every exhale, drawing the low belly up and in, deepening the fold. Inhale, look up and lengthen. Exhale, release the hands, heel toe the feet together. Inhale, root through the legs, reach the arms overhead, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, release Samasitihi. On the inhale, hug your right knee in, give it a tight squeeze, and really get the thigh into the chest. Use that action to lift up through the heart. Take your left hand, grab it at the outside of the right foot. This might be plenty. Some of us are going to inhale, sweep the right arm alongside the right ear. 
and add our twist. Extend the right leg, take the right arm behind us. And notice if you're like peeing on a bush, you're lifting that hip up. Don't do that. Roll the hip down, keep the heart tall. Good, then keep the shape in the legs. Just juice up that right quad, start to release the foot so it looks like you slipped on a banana and you're frozen in time. Happens to me a lot, don't know about you guys. Then we go swimming, take that right leg back, sweep the right fingertips forward, place into the earth underneath your right shoulder head. The left hand's gonna come into the left hip, pull that hip back so you get super long through the chest. Right inner thigh rolls up. Maybe you pause here, maybe you peel that left arm up, you need to part the arch and drops in a rotated half moon. And think length, not straight. So get super long. Spread through the back of that right knee. Heart forward. Place both fingertips down. Inhale, look up and lengthen. Discipline, discipline. Good. Then exhale, drop the right leg to meet the left. Come back into your squat so the knees bend. We're going to twist to the right this time. So swing the knees over to the left. Get a deep as snuggle as you can. So the shoulder of that left arm is as close to the right knee as possible. Then plant the palms under the shoulders, look way forward, pick your hips up, and then start to dive the chest past the fingers. And the weight has to go forward, otherwise the feet are never going to get light enough to lift off. Good. And if you're just working the twist today, amazing. Put both feet down. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, fold. Heel to the feet apart, hip width distance, cut a hastasana. Pick up the soles of the feet, slide the palms underneath, hooking the wrists in front of your toes. Inhale, look up and lengthen. Exhale, bend your elbows, crown of the head to the earth. See if you can pull the elbows next to the legs so you're like wrapping them around. Feel that encourage the shoulders to lift away from the ears. I know a lot of times you hear elbows wide, elbows wide, but try it the other way today. So you inhale, look up and lengthen. Exhale, release the hands down, heel to the feet apart wide. And we're gonna drop our hips down, coming into Malasana. Taking the hands in front of the heart, lifting the heart up nice and tall. You can hang out in Malasana. If you'd like to add on, you're gonna stretch your left arm in front of the left shin bone, reach that right arm up, adding a twist. Further optional, spin the palms, bend the elbows, so you got the right hand with the left. Reaching the hands to the floor, lifting up through the heart. And you squeeze the sit bones together to get a little more levity through the chest. If you have your bind, place your left arm down, right arm up, and exhale, back to center. Other side, inhale, sweep the right arm in front of the right shin bone, and feel that action draw the knee back. It's a big hip opener. And inhale, left arm sweeps up. Spin the palms if you'd like to add on. Bend the elbows. Take a hold of the left fingertips and wrist. And pull the fingers down. Lift the heart up. Sometimes we sink too much into the pelvis here. Squeeze the sit bones together and just feel that lift your body up. And place your left, right arm down, left arm up. Exhale, come back to center. And we're going to sit from here. So uh, put your buns down. Extend both legs straight. So you can reach out in a seat. So inhale, hug the right knee into the chest. Take your right arm behind your spine. We're gonna take our left arm and we're gonna try to twist here. So take the left elbow to the outside of the right knee. And notice if when you twist, you kind of just stop with the elbow outside the knee and you're like, I'm twisted, this is good enough. And it is good enough, but maybe we can twist a little bit deeper because it allows us to get more compact, which we're gonna use later. So take that left shoulder head, try to snuggle it down to the outside of the knee. So shoulder outside the knee, not the elbow. Some of us are gonna hang out like this. Some of us are gonna spin that left palm forward, bend the elbow and think like a robot arm. You're gonna hook that robot arm around the right leg. And take your left arm behind your spine, seeking out the right fingertips or wrists. And if you get there and you're like, oh, why is that happening? No, 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 no. Just work this, just the same. And inhale, get tall through the heart. Exhale, press that right hip forward, pull the left hip back. Feel that action deepen the twist. So no need to push against yourself and crank and reach for something that's not already a part of our center. Just even up through the hips. 
Good, then inhale, come to center. Exhale, de-rotate to the other side, this one breath. Inhale, come to center, and exhale, we're gonna pick the right leg off the floor so the shin bones parallel to the earth. And remember when we were balancing in moonrise and that was maybe not your favorite part of today? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, now we're gonna do it seated and it might be your favorite part of today. So take your left hand to the pinky edge side of the right foot. If you have some hamstring stuff going on, this might be plenty. Otherwise, inhale, extend the right leg, lift up through the heart, and exhale, stretch that right arm back. And can you twist? Yes, but can you also get tall? Then inhale, come back to center, take a hold of both edges of the feet. Inhale, lengthen through the heart, and exhale, crown toss into variation. Can you start to take the shin bone and the chin a little bit closer? I almost said your chin bone. Is that a bone? Mm -hmm. Chin bone? Yeah, have your mandible. <laughs> Good, then inhale, stretch the right leg forward, dramatically take your head back. Again, we're gonna bend our right knee to the chest, this time Ardha Matsudrasana. Take the right foot to the outside of the left leg, roll to the outside of the left hip, and bend your left knee. Take the right arm behind your spine, inhale, sweep the left arm up, and exhale into your twist. Some of us are just gonna work with the hook. If you'd like to add on, option one, take the Ashtanga wrap, reaching for the, around the right big toe. Maybe taking your left arm, right arm behind the spine, seeking at the top of that left hip. Some of us, maybe we go for a bind, reaching the left arm through the hole of the right leg, grabbing the right fingertips or wrist. And same work as John Arichiasana C. Every inhale, you lengthen. Every exhale, press that right hip forward and feel that revolve the chest open. Inhale, look forward, release your twist. Exhale, plant your hands to frame your right foot. On the inhale, push into the right foot, lift your left leg straight up, this, up to the ceiling, look up and lengthen. And exhale, fold over your right leg, standing splits. If you're happy working with standing splits, stay put. If you want to practice handstand, plant the palms underneath your shoulders. Look forward. Start to shift the weight past your fingers to peel the pelvis up into handstand. And then either right from handstand or standing splits, look up and lengthen. And exhale, right to chaturanga. Go, jump, right from it. Good, inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, hips move up and back down, we're facing dog. Deep inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. On the inhale, stretch your heels back, try to throw your shoe thighs. Exhale, look forward, hop your feet to the pinky edges of your hands. So feet go wide, drop down the lasana, and then again, come to sit, extend your legs. This time you're going to hug your left knee into the chest. And just step the left foot out to the left, one fist with distance. So there should be space between the inner thigh and the foot. And take your left arm behind the spine, right arm goes to the outside of the left leg. Some of us are going to work the hook. Some of us are going to become a robot and bind. If you want to go for the robot addition, you're going to try to snuggle the shoulder as far or as close to the knee as you can, and then make a robot arm. Spin the hand behind that left leg. Take the right arm behind your spine, seeking out the fingertips, or maybe even the wrist. Then press that left hip forward, pull that right hip back, and feel that deep in your twist. Gaze is over that left shoulder head. Inhale, come to face center. Exhale, release, and just one breath to de-rotate to the other side. Good. Inhale, center. Exhale, sit down. Pick your left leg up so the shin bones parallel to the floor. Right hand comes to the pinky edge side of the left foot. Inhale, extend the left leg. Exhale, peel that left arm back. And just kind of do the work of the balance pose here. Roll that left outer hip down, lift up through the heart. Press through the foot and with equal force, pull the hand back. And so next time you're balancing, your body's going to be like, I kind of remember this, and we were seated, it's harder now, but I kind of know what to do. And the more you focus on what you need to do, instead of, ah, this is hard, the better things go. Good, then inhale, come to center. Exhale, take a hold of both edges of the feet. Already have your heart nice and tall. Inhale, lengthen, and exhale, chin towards the shin. Make your little crown chasana. 
I almost call this a heron sandwich, which is a terrible thing for a vegan to say. <laughs> and inhale, take your left leg forward, throw the head back dramatically, and exhale. We're going to bend our left knee to the outside of the right. Roll to the outside of the right hip. Take the right foot outside the left. And the left arm comes behind the spine. Inhale, right arm sweeps up. Exhale, twist. So snuggle the right arm to the outside of the left leg. And you want a deep as snuggle as you can get here. So shoulder tries to go around the knee. So if you can like fit a hand between the rib cage and the leg, try to close that gap off. Option one, reach for the front of your left foot. Option two, reach that left arm through the hole of the legs, grabbing the right fingertips or wrist. Then every inhale, lengthening. Every exhale, press that left hip forward, rotate the chest open. Can you be grounded, but also lift up through the heart? As you inhale, come to center. Exhale, plant the palms to frame your left foot. Roll the chest forward, inhale, sweep that right leg up, standing splits, and exhale, folds. Maybe hang out in standing splits, just working length through the legs, which is going to be really useful in a second. Maybe some of us plant our palms flat, start to shift the weight past the fingertips, finding headstand. Yeah, Jen. Hi. Hey. And then there's an emergency. You can't think about it. We just have to go to Chaturanga. So inhale, look up and lengthen, and exhale, go. Yes, inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, take your hips up and back down, we're facing dog. Hold and breathe. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Good, drop down child's pose. Lift up to sit. So we're gonna work a pose called Fallen Angel, and this is the pose I got a request for probably more than any other pose, so y'all came on a good day. And Fallen Angel is usually taught one specific way. I know another way, and I'm gonna teach you guys both. The first Fallen Angel is kind of like a, like a break dancer that you'd see out on the street, and the second one is more like a ninja that you would see in the movie. I don't know why I have to mention where you would see these things. <laughs> I'm sure you've seen them before. Okay, so um, I'll walk you through the first one, we'll try it together. I'll walk you through the second one, we'll try it together. And then of course, an angel can't fall from the ground, so we're gonna have to find it from an inversion and actually fall into it. So, this is exactly a side crow. We just add a little bit more choreography through the legs. So like anything that we work in yoga, there are stages, and you can work the most basic part of the pose and not really move on, and that's awesome. You're still doing the work, you're still reaping the benefits. The fancy stuff that comes after is usually for us poor people that have been doing this so long, we're not like getting anywhere, we just have to keep practicing over and over and over, that we have to add other stuff on so we can focus. So you start just like you would for side crow. You're gonna make sure you're in a teeny, teeny, tiny little bundle. I like to make sure that my thighs are touching my chest. Then we're gonna to twist to the right this time first. So you're gonna swing your knees over to the left and get a deep a snuggle as you can. You want the knees as close to the armpit as possible. If the knees are more towards your elbow, it'll still work. But if anything goes wrong, you don't have much leeway if your leg slides off the arm. So deep as deep as deep as twist you can get. Then you're gonna plant your palms down underneath the shoulders. I'm trying to think the best angle. I'm gonna down with this way. So you want to get a deep twist, plant the palms under the shoulders. From here, just a good old side crow. Pick your hips up, take the chest past the fingers, sweep the heels up to the sit bones. And then you put your side crow on an elevator. You squeeze the elbows and you go, Meow. and then you face up to the floor. So you can actually put your temple down, which is pretty nice. You're going to take the top leg, reach it up to the ceiling, take this bottom leg, rotate onto the quad, and you're like an angel with this. Crash that <laughs> <laughs> to come out of this, you're going to take the top knee down. One, two, three. Push the earth away. And you come down. Okay? So one, I know it's a very beautiful pose. Um, one thing I do want to mention about this, did you see what my shoulder was doing, my right shoulder? It's totally on the floor, which is not typical arm balances. Usually, we're like hovering above it, squeezing the arms together. This one's a little gimpy. Because when you fall, it's never never perfect. So I'll show you the other side so you can see what the shoulder's doing. Okay, so I twist to the left. 
Plant my palms down. Sorry, I'm not good with angles. So you're going to set it up. Find your side curl. Look. See where the, my face goes? See how the shoulder's pretty much on the floor? And then I can find it. So you have a lot more support, which makes it pretty nice, but it is a deep twist. Put both knees down. Okay, so I'll talk you guys through that. Come into a squat. Deep, 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 little teeny tiny squat, thighs to the chest, you're a little, little bundle. And this is step one. Everybody can do this. Everybody can do this. Everyone can do this, yeah? Okay, then from here, spin the knees over to the left. And get a deep a snuggle as you can. Snuggle, snuggle, snuggle. So this might be it. This is a really amazing twist. It's very deep. It's actually a precursor to Pashasana, which is the deepest twist I know. You're stimulating a ton of digestion and detox here. Good stuff. If you'd like to move on, plant the palms under the shoulders. Look forward, start to shift the shoulders past the fingers. Pick your hips up, squeeze the heel towards your sit bone, side curl. And the next step, put your side curl on the elevator, going down. You take the right chunk bowl to the earth, pick that left leg up, spin onto the right quad. Reach, you're picking apples off the sitting with your toes. You reach, 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 reach. Good, yes. And then put both knees down, push the earth away, and come down. <laughs> Any questions now that we've tried that? I couldn't get my shoulder down. Yeah, me It's not like you intentionally put your shoulder down. That's like a byproduct. Like okay, it usually will just go down. So don't, if you can do it, because the second version I'm going to show you guys, the shoulder's not down. Your face oh. isn't even down. Oh, so okay. it doesn't matter. Yeah, these poses aren't like you will do it this way or it's wrong. It's like kind of get to church on time and make, make it work. Okay? So don't think about things too much. Just go. All right, so back into your bundle. Teeny, teeny, tiny little squat. Spin your knees over to the right, twist to the left. And then deep a twist as a twist you can. Snuggle that right arm as far down the left leg as possible. Then arm, uh, wrist underneath the shoulders, look forward, pick your hips up, start to take the gaze and the weight past your fingers. Good. Then squeeze the elbows going down, left shoulder or left temple down, pick that left leg up, spin or right leg up, pick, spin onto the left quad. You're reaching to the feet. Reach, 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 reach. Good. Then both quads down, push the other way. Yes! Good! So that is the easier way. That's our break dancer way. The second way, you can put your face on the floor, but I want you guys to try not to because it just requires a little bit more presence and strength. This time, instead of taking the leg straight up to the ceiling, you like karate chop it over your face. So it's pretty, pretty intense. But the good news is, you don't have to spin that bottom quad up. It just kind of stays in that side crow shape. So this one has a very specific angle. It has to be photographed in, otherwise it's an epic cross shot. <laughs> so I'm trying, to, I'm trying to figure that out. I'm probably going to get it wrong. So you come into your squat. We're going to find your twist. Deep, oh, twist. The deepest twist you can. Twist, 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 twist. Then from here, you plant the palms down, pick it up, side crow. I lower my cheek down, but not all the way, just a little. I take my top leg. And I reach it up and overhead. So it's like a ninja instead of a brick dancer. And then I push the earth away. One, two, three. And I come out. Okay? So give that one a go. If you want to put your cheek down on that, it's okay. Maybe you just want to challenge yourself and try to let it hover. Okay, so in your squat, teeny, teeny, tiny bundle. Swing the knees to the left, twist to the right. And again, twisting and holding here, nothing to sneeze at. Good stuff. Good, then plant your palms down, shift the gaze and weight forward so the feet get light. And lower just a little, like you go to the second floor, take your right left leg, kick it up and over the head. So you're just like, whoosh, whoosh, slice it over. Good. A little harder, yeah? Good, and then leg to the front of the, yes, 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 more to me, more to me, to me, to me. Yes! <laughs> it takes a lot of hip flexor okay, stuff. Okay, so you have to like rotate the leg. I like, actually keep it pretty much in the turn. Well, you took your leg back and then swung it forward. Okay. Don't take it back, just okay. straight shot over the air. Okay, other side. We have to try both sides. So come into your squat, spin the knees to the right, twist to the left. Get as deep a snuggle as you can. Snuggle, 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 snuggle. Plant your palms under the shoulders. 
Look forward, shoulders towards the front of the mat. You have to kind of stay on top of it. So elbows together, round the spine. Start to shift your weight past the fingers. Lower the cheek to like the second floor and then slice that right leg up and over. Yes. Yes, good. And then come back to center, shake out the wrists. Really nice. Any last questions about that before we add one little more element? Yeah, I can see my like legs straightening, but it's pointing this way. It's how does it? You might just not be able. You might not have the hip flexor strength to be able to like summon the leg over the ear, <laughs> and it will come. These poses are like um, it's like melting ice. Like ice doesn't just like go from. So yeah, so you just kind of have to let these things unwind with time. It just takes time. Okay, so we're going to move our mats over to a wall space. We're going to actually let our angel fall from greater heights this time. <laughs> so get your mat over to a wall. Length of the wall? Um, yeah. We can fit a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, that's a good wall space. Okay, so have we all tried um, sheer shots in a B to um, side throw before? Yes? Okay, so we're going to take sheer shots in a B, hug the knees into the chest, try to find a really deep location through the body, and then find side throw. And what could we connect after our side throw when we were just working? Yeah. Fallen angel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fallen angel. So we're just going to like make a little epic saga out of this sequence. So first step, you work your sheer shots in a B. Second step, you learn how to hug the thighs in and get super, super tight in the body. Third step, you start to revolve the pelvis. Fourth step, you lower down. Fifth step, you find your fallen angel. I don't know why it's just an epic sound. So, okay. so you're going to find your sheer shots in a B. Coming into your tripod headstand. From here, making sure the elbows hug together so the sides are engaged. You're going to hug the knees into the chest, making yourself as small as you can. Think about that deep twist. You're going to spin your knees over to one side. My thighs are still glued to my chest, and I'm going to land the legs down. I'm going to squeeze my arms, pick it up, side curl, and then put my cheek down, top leg lifts. Spin up to that bottom quad. We're all just here a second ago. Then we're gonna put the top foot down and then going out. Okay? So step one, just work sheer shots in a B. Try the heads down. Second step, get upside down. Can you make yourself super, super tiny? Third step, maybe start to think about revolving. Fourth step, maybe lower down. If that goes well, side pro. If that goes well, find your fallen angel. Should your hip be on the other elbow or just your knee? No, just one. Okay. Yeah, you can't do this. That's why I like teaching this one. You can't put the hips on both. Yeah. Which is correct method. But if you're just learning and you need to put the hip on too, that's fine. So pick your head up first and then work the legs. Oh. Okay. Yeah. And I showed you like the pause, I asked you, she's time. It's like a pause, we want that energy. Oh, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> it would be like, the last part you got. No, I can't tell. 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 I can not tell 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 i can not
and we want defeated splats. Those are good signs. If you like work, 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 and then, ugh. Sorry. Yes! <laughs> that was so close. Just try to keep the knees more into the chest. You kind of let them sink away and then everything yeah. collapse. So twist a little more, keep everything intact. So you just got to hang on for like one more second. One more second. And make sure you're doing both sides evenly. Don't pick like one side and you think that's the cozy side. Stay there. Yeah. Yeah. And about another minute or so to finish up. So if you're cooked, take a child's pose. If you are still working, keep going. So while those of you are finishing up, I'm going to talk to you guys. So. Poses and sequences and transitions like the ones we just did are so challenging, but they are so good for us. How many times have you worked on something that required a lot of stages and you'll like almost get to where you quote unquote are trying to go, like the destination, and it just all collapses and you get so frustrated because you're like, I've done this much work and I did this, that, and the other trying to make this happen, and then it just all fell apart right before I achieved whatever I was seeking. Am I the only one that's happened to? Happens a lot. And this is like the same thing. It's like you work so hard getting yourself into your head stand. You work so hard trying to make yourself strong and compact. You work so hard finding that twist. And then you lower the legs down and you can like almost see it. You can like almost find the side crow. And then you think once I'm in the side crow, I'm going to blossom into this beautiful thing. And then you like have a just be it's flat. And you're like, ugh. And that's so good for us because it teaches us that sometimes your train derails too soon. And you have to be okay with the effort you did put in and not get obsessed with the final result. And you really have to enjoy the journey, as cheesy and overset as it is. And our yoga practice is here just to teach us that. To teach us that you try, you try, you try. And sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. But can you just be happy that you put the effort in? Okay, inhale, come on up to sit. And we're gonna go come back to the middle of the room, close out. Any last fallen angel questions? See, angels historically, they act like they have it all together. Except for that one. Isn't there one in this Bible that didn't go according to plan? Oh. <laughs> yeah, one. <laughs> Just one. <laughs> See, but they do, they do too fall and mess up and have defeated splats. Okay, so we're going to come on to our bellies until I down. And I had a big revelation in my practice yesterday that I'm going to try to share with you guys. So bring your forehead to the center of the mat. Extend both arms alongside your body face up. And just take a very deep cleansing exhale there. Good. Then roll the inner thighs towards the mat, which I usually do the opposite, but I think this feels good. Then press the sit bones towards the belly, course with the ribs together. As you inhale, lift your head, legs, chest, and shoulders. Shalabhasana, the locust pose. Then keep your knuckles flat on the floor. And then see if you can get the toes and the heels to touch at the same time. Good. Back of the neck long. Look at your nose. Inhale. Exhale, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Get long. Pull the ribs in. Spread through the back of the knees. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, lower. Take a cheek to the mat. Rest. Bring your forehead back to the center of the mat. We're going to take Shalabhasana round two. So if that felt good to roll the inner thighs forward, go ahead and do that again. Sit bones press into the belly, course at the ribs together. Exhale out all the air. Inhale, press into the pelvis, lift your head, legs, chest, and shoulders. Shalabhasana, look this pose. I'm going to breathe very intentionally. Big breath into the shoulder blades. Exhale, draw the navel up in. Then right from your shoulder box, and don't think about it, just bend your knees, reach for the tops of the feet or ankles. Inhale, kick the feet into the hands, pull close. Go ahead, inhale. Exhale, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. 
Inhale, listen closely. Exhale, right back into Shalabhasana. Inhale. Exhale, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Bend your knees. Reach from the tops of the feet to the ankles. Inhale, lift up both pose. Exhale, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, slowly lower. She comes to the mat and you rest. And sometimes when we do a pose individually, we're like, oh, I totally got this. And then you link it to other ones and you're like, oh, no, don't got it. Or it's a lot harder than you thought. Okay, come onto your backs. Setting up for either a supported bridge, grabbing a block, putting it underneath your sacrum, a regular bridge pose, bent knees, palms alongside the body or Urdhva Dhanidasana, reversing the hands next to the ears. So setting up, enthusiastically. <laughs> the sutras say that our practice, we can't just do it. We can't even do it for a long time, but we have to do it enthusiastically. He like specifically puts that in it. So set it up, and enthusiastically, inhale, lift on up into your back bend. Pushing into the hands and the feet. This time, inner thighs roll down. Push the heart up. Push the pelvis up. Use your legs almost like you could stand, because one day you will. And exhale, slowly lower. Take your hands face on onto the belly, get soft. And that was like your first pancake back bend, the one that's never so good. Except they all looked amazing. <laughs> and we're going to do one more. So set it up again, bridge wheel or supported bridge. Exhale out all the air, and on the inhale, come on up. Inhale, lift. Inhale. Exhale, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. And can you trust whatever your body's doing right now is good enough? And just be still. Just breathe. Just trust. Nothing else to see if you're there. And exhale, slowly lower. Take your hands face on onto the belly. Bend your knees. Walk the feet wide. Knock your knees together. When your low back feels settled, hug both knees into your chest. Give them a tight squeeze. Squeeze them in. Maybe you should change to a happy baby if that's what your body wants. Hugging the knees back into your chest, keeping the right leg hugged in. Extend your left leg to hover or to rest on the floor. No more core work. <laughs> rest that leg down. Then twist your right leg over to the left side of your body. Further optional, bend your left leg, reach around with the right hand from the top of the foot of your ankle. Further optional, you can extend that right leg and reach for the pinky edge side of the foot. So it's almost like that moonrise shape that we did balancing and seated, but now you're reclined. It just keeps getting better. Inhale, come back to center. Put both knees in. Keep the left leg hugged into the chest. Extend your right leg to hover. Twist the right leg over, or sorry, twist the left leg over to the right. Bend your right knee. Reach out with the left hand to the top of the foot of the ankle. Maybe hanging out here. Maybe taking a hold of the pinky edge side of the left leg and extending that leg straight. So create some really nice traction and movement through your spine. And if it doesn't, don't do it. Do what feels good. Inhale, coming back to center, coming both knees in, rocking up to sit, extending both legs straight for Pashimottanasana, flexing through the feet. Don't pull the butt cheeks apart. In fact, squeeze them closer. Inhale, lengthen, and exhale, fold. I'm sure at some point in our life, every single one of us has received the message like we're good enough, or like be yourself. 
In the Yoga Sutras, Patanjali says you should have Pani Janadva, that you should just surrender and trust that everything's good. And that's when we really start to find our highest self. And we intellectually kind of believe that. It's not like we challenge it too often. Some of us, I guess, do more than others. But after a yoga practice where you've had an opportunity and an interface just to breathe and to move and to feel without having to worry about too much else besides what your own body is doing, you can emotionally and energetically start to feel it. And that's what makes yoga such an amazing practice is we don't just talk about things, we feel them and we experience them. And we don't really experience them in their entirety. I guess some very evolved people do. But it's just like little tastes here and there. And we get very curious about what those little glimmers of stillness and peace were. And we just keep following that. I've known a lot of people who were very serious about their yoga practice and looked very dedicated and you would have no doubt in their mind that they would do that practice forever. And then like two years later, you find out they're not practicing. And then you ask them what happened and they're like, I got bored. And you realize that they really were just focusing on the physical body and what their body could do. And that does get very boring after a while. But what we unveil underneath that is very exciting and it's a lifetime of work. So to keep ourselves sustainable, keep ourselves hungry for the practice, we have to continuously seek what's underneath these poses. We have to enthusiastically seek what's underneath these poses. We have to try so hard every single chance we get so that underneath that little bit of effort might be part of yourself you've never discovered before. And then we're not so concerned with keeping it all together on the surface. We're just more excited about being authentic, about feeling what's really, really here. And we don't feel the need to curate ourselves and present our best selves to the world. We just want to be us. Do what feels natural, do what feels right. We learn to trust. So inhale, lift up to six. Exhale, the cold knees into the chest, give them a tight squeeze. Exhale, open the knees apart, bottom to asana. Squeeze the heels together, open the balls of the feet apart. Inhale, lengthen, and exhale, fold forward. So don't just hover in this sensation through the hip flexors, but see if you can feel that energy breaking up and then identify an emotion or something underneath it that may have been laid before. Like in my own practice, when I used to do Baddha Konasana, I come out of it crying. Just because there's so much stored in my hip flexors. So you start to see this energy is not just energy, it's a whole experience that's been stored in my physical body. Inhale, lift up to sit. Exhale, gather the knees together. Separate your legs wide, Vishta Konasana. Inhale, lengthen, and exhale, bow forward. Reaching for the pinky edges of the feet. Inhale, stretching the heart to the front of the mat. And exhale, bow. Rolling the inner thighs up. A few more breaths, really try to lengthen, pull the heart forward, send the hip bones back. And then exhale, just collapse and fold and drape. Sink into this. You can rest your head on a block or underneath your or top of your hands. Up to sit. Exhale, gather the knees together, extend the legs straight, bounce the legs up and down. If you want to counter pose, you can hit the palms behind you for one breath. Just keep the pelvis up. And exhale, come on down. Come onto your back, sitting at Prashabhasana. 
Separating your legs wider than your hips, allowing your palms to face the ceiling. Softening the shoulders away from your ears. Taking a deep inhale right into the heart center, holding on to that breath at the top when you're completely full. Exhale, open the mouth, let that go. And take rest. to deepen your breath, having any movement to your body that feels nice and just comes intuitively, finding your way into a comfortable seat either by rolling to your side or just pressing up. Gathering your hands in front of your heart center with your eyes closed. For the last time in this practice, connecting to that stillness that you created through movement, through breath, through listening and stillness, and just being okay with whatever energy is in this space, realizing that just like people like to curate your life, we do kind of like to curate this space as well, but that's not living. In order to be authentic, you have to let this space fill up with whatever your true and authentic experience is. And just trust that it's a shared experience because everyone's human and being okay with it, making it a part of who you are. Taking a deep inhale, exhale, open the mouth, let that go. <sighs> inhale very slowly. Oh.
guys so much. Thank you. Have a really Thank nice you. week. And I'll see you sometime. <laughs> for, <laughs> for California, I work. For training? Yeah. I'm going. I'm not going for you too much. I'm just going to go. <laughs>